We are here in Los Angeles. E3 2019 is sort of underway. We had our first full days of press conferences. Uh, saw a lot of exciting stuff. So what are some highlights for you guys so far? I just did back-to-back uh, -back Ubisoft and Square Enix press conferences. If I had to talk about one thing, it's probably going to be the Avengers game because people are really, really psyched about seeing that. And now we know what it is. It's a kind of party-based action-adventure game. You play as Iron Man, Captain America, the Incredible Hulk, and Black Widow. We don't know exactly how it's going to all play out yet. We know there's going to be some downloadable content, potentially some new characters. For all that, I'm still excited for it. I think that it's going to be a sideways take on a classic Avengers story we've now lived with for 10 years or so. Bring it on. Let's get some uh, Tom's Guide multiplayer going and see how it plays out. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'm going to talk about uh, the key the key buzzwords of the show, cloud gaming. So a little bit of Google Stadia, a little bit of uh, Bethesda's Orion, and subscription services. So many subscription services. Subscription services I want. Xbox Game Pass for PC. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Yes. The subscriptions I don't want. $14 Uplay with Stadia. No. I'm now fatigued. You've, you've killed the joy of subscription gaming for me, you, you, Ubisoft. I can't even do it. Can't even talk right now. But on the other side, we have Orion. Thank you, Bethesda, because if cloud gaming is going to become a thing, we have to combat latency. And Bethesda is actually doing something from the software side of it instead of just buying, just building data centers as far as the eye can see and filling them with unfeeling servers. Thank you, Ubisoft, for Orion. So on the flip of software, we've actually had a fair bit of hardware these first two days. Um, at Microsoft's press conference, we got our first real announcement of Project Scarlet, the next-gen Xbox. That's a code name, of course. It's coming holiday 2020, powered just like the next PlayStation with an AMD processor and AMD's Navi GPU. Don't know much about it, except that it's going to launch with Halo Infinite, which looks really great from the demos we've seen so far. AMD on its own today has been sort of making a victory lap. It's in a PlayStation. It's in an Xbox. It's powering Stadia's data servers. And now they've, they've gone over their new Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and today announced their Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs. For me, bringing it back to the games, it's probably Watch Dogs Legion. First two very unique takes on the open world with all sort of the uh, mobile app controls you can get. But now they've brought it to my home turf. And not only just playing one single character, you get to play the entirety of London taking on some kind of fascist state of the future, which is a real worry for me right now. So it'll be good to get some preparation when they release it in the next few months. <laughs> the highlight of E3 so far, for me by far, has been Doom Eternal. It looks so awesome. It looks like everything that was great about the 2016 Doom reboot. It's fast, it's violent, it looks super fun, super brutal, but it's really just taking that to new levels. There's uh, the game looks to add just a lot of verticality, a lot of platforming element, elements, so really just, just leaning into being a crazy, intense, over-the-top shooter. And that's all we want from a Doom game, so I cannot wait for Doom Eternal to launch this November 22nd, pretty much everywhere, uh, including Stadia, which should be interesting. That's our first of many E3 recaps coming for you this week. Definitely keep it locked to Tom's Guide for all things E3 2019. Not just Tom's Guide, Laptop Mag, Tom's Hardware, right. like everyone, future family. <laughs>